Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial where we're looking at creating a simple four point adaptive component that we explored in the previous tutorial where we're looking at Rhino inside and how to place this adaptive component. But we're gonna just show how to make just the component itself in this video. So just really quickly to show, this is the previous exercise that we did with Rhino inside. And in this case, we had an adaptive component that had three different types and and then had different offsets to it so it's pretty much just a simple surface with some insets here and we just explored that in rhino and but uh, let's go ahead and just build this up from scratch okay so this is the final product so if you want to do adaptive components and again if you really like this video remember to like this video and share it with a friend We'll be producing tons of architecture outcome driven learning uh, in the coming weeks and months. So definitely stay tuned, but go ahead and just go ahead. Go ahead and go up to file new family. Go to your family template that you need and come down here to generic model adaptive. It should be available in whatever language you're learning this from. So generic model adaptive it open. And for this, um, I typically like to set my project units. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna set project units to, um, to length, fractional inches. That's just what I use. And then I know based on the panel I'm making, it's gonna be a four point adaptive component. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do reference and point. And uh, I can see right here, it says reference level. And I can just click that four times in space. It doesn't matter the relationship they have to each other right now, just as long as they're on the same level. Select all of these, come up here and say make adaptive. You can see the order I place them in is pretty important. If you screwed that up, just go ahead and make sure it's in kind of a clockwise or counterclockwise order. Next, we wanna make sure we connect these so I can just select two at a time, come up here to this is going to be your favorite component in the adaptive component space, spline by points. Okay, that's going to be your favorite one. So select that and then just come over here to is reference line. And when you do that, it's going to give you a reference line. Uh, there's reasons for this, but basically it's just a lot more stable. So we're going to repeat that process for the next, uh, the next ones. So spline by points. Is reference. Okay, cool. So if you wanted to, you could just select this chain of reference lines, go up to create form, hit surface, and you'd be able to load this into your project right now. Um, but we're gonna add a bit more parametric ability to this, okay? So instead of that, I'm actually gonna create those insets we talked about. So once again, I'm gonna go up to reference and point, <clears throat> and I'm gonna hover on this and make sure I'm targeting that reference line. Okay, I'm just gonna drop two points on it. Now I can see based on the shape, it looks like it's kind of embedded on the line there. If I click that, I can confirm with just one plane uh, that this is in fact posted on that line. If I, did, if I wasn't sure, I could just test this by flexing it, and I could see that that point is moving. Okay. So I wanna do it on just one side here, and then repeat that to the other side by doing reference point, hovering on that line and selecting it. Okay. And I can just double check if I was unsure. Okay, now the things we wanna pay attention to are over here. So let me just zoom in real quick. You can see here, if I select a point, there's measurement type. And right now it's just a normalized curve, which is that percentage from zero to one. But I actually wanna go ahead and set it to a segment length. And you can see right here, it's saying 52 inches um, relative to the beginning. Now, if I just change that to something more nominal, like two inches, oops, that's gonna start to snap into place there. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead um, 
and we'll we'll set this up after. So basically, we'll, we'll control all the parametrics over here. So let's finish up setting up our geometry, and then we'll we'll, we'll stabilize this with the parameters. Okay. <clears throat> so now that I've got those two set. I want to create this uh, create two rails by selecting points across from each other. Do spline by points again. Go over to reference is reference line. And then I'm going to repeat that once more for the others. Selecting them, holding control, doing spawn by points, saying is reference line. And then <clears throat> I'm going to repeat this process one more time and anchor a reference point on these inner reference lines here. So if I'm at this point right here, um, you can basically just do reference line and go over here and say three snapping, make sure that's turned on and chain is checked on. And now I can basically just snap to these inner points here and I have to make sure I've got that kind of circle with the crosshairs. And if I do that and snap to these points, it's gonna create um, an inner set of reference lines. So I've got a reference line sitting on top of another reference line. So if you select that, and now let's create form. I've got <clears throat> an inner surface, which is inset from the outer placement points. Uh, again, you can do this the inverse way, but I'm just kind of creating a, an inset panel here. Okay, so next thing I want to do is what we started talking about, which is those segment lengths. Okay. So you could the the most stable way to do this is to just tab in select that and change this to segment length and this is 218 inches <clears throat> that's pretty intense i wanted to set it relative to the end of of this so you can see it's 51 inches right now and i'm going to change that to i'm just going to call it type one or um offset one And the reason I changed this one to end is because now I can set the same distance for this one, which is relative to the beginning. Okay, so relative to the beginning, hit associate parameter, go over to offset one, hit enter. And now those are gonna start snapping into place. And we'll repeat that process for the other side over here. So just change it to segment length, change it to offset one, and then one more time, change this one to relative to the end, do segment length, and associate that length to offset one. Cool, so now it's starting to snap into place, and I can test this by just going to the edit types uh, dialog box and changing this to something smaller. And I can see here in the back of my screen that that's starting to flex for me all at the same time. Now we just need to repeat this process for the inner layer. So again, this is gonna be relative, relative to this hosted line. So we're just gonna repeat that process for all four points. I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead, but basically it's just that same process, do segment length. I'm gonna say this one relative to the end. Uh, actually, let's do beginning. And then I'm gonna create a new parameter called offset two. and hit okay. And then um, I'm gonna change that down to something, something else, okay. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fast forward. We're just gonna repeat that same process as before. Okay, so now that we have that basically set up in place, we can verify it's working by just doing a little bit of flexing. So if I just change offset number two and hit apply, I can see that's uh, tightening down. And likewise, if I just do this um, for offset number one, that's gonna get tightened down there. So now I'm gonna set this to a more rational size and I'm just gonna label these type one, type two, and type three. And then uh, just change the values. So let's do type one is the smallest. Let's do that at two and two. 
and this one will be 2 and 6, and then the third one will be 4 and 12 or whatever. It's uh, totally up to you to set this. Okay, now that we have our type, the last thing I want to do is just control the materiality of this. So I'm going to associate a material and just call it uh, surface. And that's just referring to it. I like doing that because then it groups under materials and finishes. So I know what I'm referring to. And then one more time, I'm going to select that surface and just assign a subcategory to it. And there's only two by default, but if you want to add one, this gives you control in the visibility graphics once you load it to your project. If you want to add a new one, just go to Manage, Object Styles. And then I know this is a generic model, so I'm going to go down to Generic Model and just create a new subcategory. And I'm just going to call this Demo. Uh, let's just do Adaptive Surface Demo. Cool, and I could, sp I could specify all this right, right here if I wanted to um, and work with it. I could also just make sure there's a material attached, so for rendering purposes, if you want to do that now, go for it. Apply, and okay. Now just make sure you save this before you go too far. And load that into your project. All right, so we've been doing this quite a bit. Uh, that's why this is so messy right now. But if I come back to my demo here, um, I'm gonna go ahead before I go too much farther and just unpin all this and delete it. And then if I wanted to make sure that's working with my grasshopper script that we worked in a previous lesson, again, if you didn't see that lesson, go ahead and check out the card linked in the description um, to check out that tutorial where we develop this adaptive uh, component by type. And again, uh, if you just need to reference that in to Rhino Inside, you just go up to the Revit tab, you pull in uh, model, input, which is right here, model categories picker. And then I set that to generic models. And I can pull out my types from there. Um, if it's not working, just go ahead and recompute. And it's going to populate there. And I can just do input element type picker. And go ahead and say, adaptive surface demo type one, etc, etc, etc. If we go back to this previous project too, um, if we set that up, so I already have this in place from a previous um, illustration I worked on. I set that subcategory, so if I went into visibility graphics and just type G to jump to generic models, you can see I've got that adaptive surface and this adaptive surface demo in place. So I've already done this in a previous uh, demo, so you could actually update this and override it. So I could change the, the pattern to something else if I wanted to, and just hitting OK and apply. That's starting to work for me. Now, it, I think there's uh, multiple Hmm. That's interesting. So what I'm looking at is the fact that I can see the dashed line there, but it's not currently updating in the graphics. So if I just reset this, 
Oh, it looks because I'm in a perspective view. So if I went back to a proper 3D view, and then I overrode the graphics there. Yep, okay. So just be mindful. Um, if you're in a perspective view, you might get uh, the graphics not working as anticipated, but the best part about this now is you can actually control this in your documentation set. So I can start to work with the styles, the line thicknesses, all that good stuff in my documentation set. So that's the benefit of using a subcategory. And then also in a subcategory, if this starts to get really heavy, you can control uh, which categories are visible. So you could actually turn off that entire geometry. So if I didn't want to override it, I could actually just turn it off, hit apply. And now that entire scope of work is actually hidden from view. So definitely a lot of benefits to working with subcategories. All right. So that's all I have for this uh, adaptive component modeling exercise. Definitely let me know if you'd like to explore adaptive components further. Um, I'm really excited about how to use these between Rhino and Revit. Um, and we'll just keep trying different applications in future videos. So don't forget, if you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe. We're gonna be doing a lot more exploration of Rhino inside and Revit and architecture. Um, so definitely come back and be checking in for more. And until next time, until next time, take care, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one.